All right, so let's get down to some uh, real work here. And uh, by the end of the last video, we were kind of tinkering out around a little bit, and we'll uh, we'll continue with that. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, kind of delete out everything that uh, was it's basically set up from uh, from the end of the last video and also just from the uh, starting templates. I'm going to get rid of Hello World over here. And you'll notice down uh, in the uh, the timeline that we didn't really talk about much, the, uh, the all the, everything is basically gone, okay? And uh, let's go over here to the game scene, that Swift file as well, and just get rid of any code that came with the templates other than kind of these main functions over here. So I'm just going to go in here and kind of... Uh, Chop all that apart. Uh, let's see. I don't think we need any of that either. Go over there. Get rid of this. You know what? I'll leave this part in though. Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, yeah, we're, uh, you know, not down to nothing, but <laughs> we definitely cleaned it out. All right. So kind of get to this uh, same point and then uh, head back over here to your scene file. And we'll have some more fun at this. So uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, again, I'm going to drag a color sprite out of uh, this panel over here. And uh, we'll texture it. Uh, as, a, as promised, we won't just use the uh, the spaceship. So that means that we're going to have to import in some um, some new artwork. And uh, let's kind of start you guys off right with uh, some animated frames. Because I know, obviously, a lot of you probably want to, you know, make something more than just a static image in here. Uh, so to do that, uh, let's, let's uh, take a look at some assets that we could use. And I've even got a nice little trick to show you guys uh, when it comes to bringing in your assets. So uh, what I've got here is some, um, uh, just this uh, kind of front view of this character. And I've got the uh, the 2X and the 3X sizes over here. So I'm just kind of thumbing down through them. And it's a little hard to tell, but the guy's just basically just kind of idly breathing, right? And, uh, and you can see that uh, I've got at 2X and at 3X for uh, those corresponding images. And if I take them all at once, right, and then go over here to the assets, and just drop them in if as long as they have that at 2x and three at 3x um part in the extension or right before the uh the dot png ex extension it's going to drop each of these into uh their own little slot here and the same thing would be true if i had at 1x uh in there uh, the important thing is that you actually have them in the same folder and have them you know all sets of them selected uh when you drop them in and then they'll, uh, they'll basically go to work and um you know I come in there with that uh, that base file name in there, and you can see obviously the at part and everything after that is excluded from the uh, the file name. Uh, and you know if you uh, <laughs> if you've never used the uh, the rename option in uh, the Finder, I'd highly recommend that. So for example, what you could do is you could take a whole bunch of images, right? Um, well, let's say one set of them, your two X ones, right? The ones that don't have two X in their name yet, and just go over here to rename. So this, this is just a simple finder um, option that everyone's kind of had, but some people just sort of forget that it's in there. And uh, you can replace text. So you can see over here, replace text, find. And uh, so typically what you'll do is you'll just you know, find the .png part and then replace it with at 2x.png or at 3x.png. And it gives you a nice little uh, sample over here. And by the way, the, uh, the artwork that I'm using should be available pretty soon uh, from cartoonsmart.com for the... Uh, for our subscribers, and I'll just uh, kind of shamelessly plug this real quick. Uh, if you go over here to Game Art, you can see that uh, if you're a yearly subscriber to the website, you get tons of uh, free game art and, and more coming uh, every single month. You can see that it's uh, it's truly quite a collection now that we've uh, built up for uh, you guys, for the yearly subscribers. Uh, you guys get to actually uh, just download everything that we've been offering for the past couple of years. So, uh, and and this uh, little guy should be available soon. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's now actually get to uh, use him, and we'll go over here to our gamec.sks file. Let's pick out one of those images to just kind of be the base image for him, and obviously the, the one labeled zero zero makes the most sense. So we'll zoom in on this guy a little bit, and let's make him uh, get animated. All right, so we can see down here that we've got uh, this kind of non-assuming name for him, SK Sprite Node. Uh, let's name him something a little bit better than that, call him Player, and you can see as soon as you give him this, uh, that provide that name property in there, it's now Player. And uh, you can unfold this to see any actions that you put in here. Now, obviously, we don't have any actions on him yet, but uh, these are available in the same panel along with all of your other you know fun little goodies that you can drag into the uh, the scene along with some that you're going to drag into the timeline over here so just uh, filter this uh, type in here animate in the bottom uh, left corner right corner and you'll see animate with textures is an is an action that you can add so i'm going to just drop this uh, into here okay and then you can see over here in the uh, this panel that uh, you've got some 
uh, textures that um, we can fill in or again drop into here. Uh, what you're going to want to do at that point is switch over here to the media library and you're going to actually have to uh, command select these. You can't just shift select them. So you got to go through one at a time. Grab each one. There we go. And just drop them on into there. Uh, and you can set the uh, the duration for these. So let's see. Let's make them breathing kind of quick. We'll set that up to uh, 0 0.5. And you'll notice that that trimmed down the, uh, you know, what you saw over here. So it's no longer going out to one second. Uh, then let's right click on this. Actually, you don't have to right click. You can just go over here and uh, you can see in the bottom left, you got this little option to uh, loop it, right? And you could set, you know, a specific number of loops by just hitting the plus or minus sign. Uh, you can also loop it infinitely. So in this case, this is probably what we want to do, right? We don't want them to stop breathing. And then if you want to uh, get a live preview of uh, what's happening with them, there you go. You can see that you can just press that little, well, it did say animate a moment ago. Here, I'll stop it. So animate. Uh, one thing you want to avoid is that if you're, if you've got this animate, you know, option running, you don't want to do any sort of setup in the scene. And it actually seems like you kind of, you can, but it, it usually um, doesn't go so well. So you want to be sure you're in layout mode before you kind of tinker with anything like that. Uh, but, uh, but animate's a great, um, a great little preview option because it would also simulate physics as well. So again, let's, let's go back to layout. I'm going to go over here and uh, we'll do the same thing that we did at the end of the last video where we set an alpha mask for the uh, body definition. So it's going to use that base image and, uh, you know, just uh, the, the transparent data is obviously uh, not part of that mask. So uh, we've got a nice little physics body form. And uh, again, here, if we hit animate, let's zoom out a little bit. You're going to see him just basically drop down to the bottom of the screen. So you don't even have to um, hit run on the simulator every time you want to, you know, kind of just test and see what uh, your physics are doing. So next up, let's jump over to our game scene.swift file and let's connect together what we have in our scene, our player, uh, with some code. So we're going to create a variable or declare a variable. Uh, we're going to do this outside of any of our functions, but uh, inside of our class. So we're going to say uh, var the player and uh, we're going to say that uh, yeah you know what you're going to be an SK sprite now because that's exactly what you are in the scene and uh, there's a couple of ways we could write this uh, initial declaration for it we can just throw an exclamation uh, after that um, usually what I end up doing is uh, just writing SK sprite node and then just kind of like nothing inside of the initializer here and uh, why <laughs> that's a stupid red error for no reason uh, and then uh, after that so that's enough and uh, then in our did move to view statement what we can do is uh, it's a little bit of casting here it's bit, but it's kind of a um, really so we're, what we're doing is we're just checking to make sure that um, the thing that we think is an SK sprite node actually is so watch how this works we're gonna say if let and then I'm just gonna write here some player, okay? And that's uh, we're gonna say, okay, you're an SK sprite node. If if you can equal, and then we're gonna write here self um, dot child node with name. Now remember, we named uh, that uh, you know member in the scene, this little guy over here. We named it player, right? Okay, so that's what we're actually checking right now. So uh, if the scene has a child node with name player as and then we're putting in this question mark here it's basically saying this might fail you know we don't know for sure but if it does pass as an sk sprite node then essentially we want to continue and and at that point we can say well the player is actually going to equal this some player instance okay so these are now one and the same at that point uh but again what this does is it actually makes sure that uh the thing out there in the scene is of that SK sprite node um, uh, type, right? Uh, and let's let's catch this guy, right? If we were to run this right now, he's just gonna fall down the screen. So um, now that that's kind of succeeded, that if statement, we're gonna say uh, the player dot physics body dot is dynamic is gonna equal uh, false, right? Now keep in mind that uh, when we set this up, right? This guy is he selected. There we go. Dynamic is checked on, so that means it's actually set to true. Uh, but what we're going to do is immediately switch this to false. And if we want to kind of, you can see that I was actually testing this a moment ago. Yeah, I actually do work a little bit ahead. Uh, we could also print a, a little statement over here that says print that worked, else. Oop, I don't know why I put that there. Else. Okay, now this would, this else statement would run if this didn't work out, right? So let's just say print. Uh, well, that failed. All right, so 
what we should see on our end is again from my previous testing off screen that uh, that worked and also that he doesn't actually fall this time around right and uh if you guys did uh, watch the tail end of the last video you might remember that i switched the uh show physics to true over here let's switch that back to being false uh, just so we don't see that little dot right there in this well actually i do kind of like the blue outline but anyway for those of you wondering why you're <laughs> you're not seeing that on your end or seeing it on my end uh all right, so obviously that worked, but you know what? It's, it's always sort of fun to test, uh, you know, when these things do fail. So let's go over here and put in uh, player two, and obviously we should see that um, that it can't find a uh, a node with that name. In just a moment, and our guy just falls right on down the screen, right? So we didn't even really have to print that statement, right? <laughs> because he just fell. And also too, um, you know, this. This would catch you in a case where, uh, stupidly, you, uh, you know, put a label in the scene, right? I just dragged one in and called it player, right? Why would you do that? Who knows? Um, but, uh, but you'll see that, again, even though we have a child in the scene named player, um, it, uh, you know, that failed. He falls down. Uh, but we don't crash. I mean, so that's kind of one of the important reasons that you... Uh, do things like you know, go the, a little extra distance and, and and make this a conditional statement, right? So we just want to make sure that that's actually the case. Um, and, and again, it prevents things later on where like maybe you, uh, I don't know, you were writing custom classes and you, I don't know, you you thought you'd, uh, there's plenty of other reasons to do it, but, uh, but there we go. That's it. So we've kind of, you know, taken our first steps into the large world. Uh, well, now we can type in here the player and you'll notice that if you just put a dot after this, you've got now all the, the properties, um, that, you know, are endowed upon an SK sprite node. And of course, um, some of them like our physics body over here have their own properties in themselves. So, you know, if you, you type out physics body again, put a little dot after it you can see affected by gravity allows rotation so all those things that you saw back over there in the scene editor are also going to be available to you over here and you'll notice i'm not even worried about worrying about putting this uh, this question mark over here because if, as soon as i type in affected by gravity it kind of adds it in on itself it's basically just saying it's uh, the physics body may or may not it's optional it might not be applied right um so again you know you can go over here and you can put true false and if you're just starting out programming you also notice let's take a little step back that um if you uh if you're wondering what the value you know what, what you can possibly set for the value um is you get a little indication over here this is a bool value which means that it's either gonna be true or false or for this one area which i've never actually set um it's a cg flow value right so you get these kind of um if you don't ignore this stuff over here it, it's really uh, rather interesting so you know for example uh, dot uh, name okay well it's telling you that that's going to be a string so and hey you know what maybe after you've well i don't know why this would ever be a good idea but but you could set the name you know after you've initially you know you could set this to my player now that i don't think that would be a good idea but um and then of course too you know when you um when you just kind of highlight something or you just you know put your cursor over it like that or click down on it uh over in the quick help you get all the you know kind of uh docu the documentation version of everything and again that, that stuff is you know if you're just starting off it's really invaluable so you get to kind of kind of almost browse through all these different things and uh, learn a lot just you know just by tinkering uh on this end so let's uh let's get rid of that and let's even just switch this back to being true. So basically there's no change on it. And um, and let's take a look at the update statement, you know, just so I can kind of keep things together since we're not doing anything with the touches right now. Let's move this up a little bit. And uh, so all of your, uh, your sprite kit scenes can have this uh, update statement included or you can actually get rid of it. But uh, as, as indicated right here, it's called before each frame is rendered. So it's obviously uh, running ideally at around 60 frames per second on your device. But, uh, you know, if you're not on... A device again expect to be run, run much slower but uh, for our purposes that's fine so we can just put a little if statement in here that just says uh, if uh, the player dot uh, center oh no let's do position sorry uh, dot y all right so every uh, sk sprite node has a position property that again has this you know other property of, of x or y and uh, you could test where it's positioned at so let's say if it's greater than uh, zero you know, we can put in here print, 
uh, greater, right? Or I'm sorry, in this case, it's greater than zero, yeah. Else. Less than zero. All right, so um, we're going to see these statements again down here in the output window, which, uh, even if you have it closed, should pop up as soon as there are outputs uh, to run. And well, let's take a look. All right, so kind of... Uh, Gaming fundamentals here. Did we ever see uh, less than zero? Well, you know what? That is because we might not have started him high enough. Now, keep in mind that um, by default, your SK uh, scenes have their zero, zero point kind of set right here in the middle. And let's kind of prove that. So I'm going to actually take our player and put him at zero. And that's not at the uh, the bottom of the screen. So let's let's set him up so, uh, you know, not to fail here. Let's put him up, up like a lot higher. And how come I can't just type into that? All right, let's try. Okay, that is odd. I think that's just a temporary glitch. We'll just move them the old-fashioned way. So we'll put them up, up there at uh, 839, and we'll run this again. I, I think he was already just falling just enough to, to not trigger that, that, uh, that greater than. Well, no, it's still... That's an, that's an odd one. Oh, well, no, somebody probably saw this. I forgot to switch this back to being the actual player over here. See, there you go. And maybe if I should have just read that down that way. Well, we don't need this label on here anyway. All right, so now when we run this, see, there you go. Even your instructor can trip himself up with the with his own casting. All right, so <laughs> the grand finale of this short video is that that worked, and for a while there, he was greater than zero until he wasn't, and he fell below. Okay, so when we come back... Actually, you know what? If you want to see real quick, this might interest somebody real fast. What you could do is you could always change the uh, anchor point of the scene. So you could say self.anchorpoint, uh, and this is a CG point value. And you know what? Go ahead and click over here, and you read a little bit on the documentation about it. Nope, is it doesn't want to show us. Maybe it's self.view.anchorpoint. No, I think it's just self.anchorpoint. Um, it's, uh, I believe your range here is going to be 0 0.5, and 0 0.5 is the default. So if we put down the anchor point at 0, I believe our actual bottom then becomes, our, our 0 point for the bottom of the screen actually is at the very bottom of it. And let's see if we can kind of catch that happen live here. So greater than, yep, sure enough. I, I think if we were to pause the video and look back on that, the, at the point at which he, and he's still falling, by the way, the point at which we saw uh, greater greater stop running was right at about over here. So, uh, yes, there you do have that option to change around the anchor point. A lot of game developers do that because they prefer to have the, the that zero point at the very bottom of the screen for you know reasons just like this. So, anyway, when we come back, we'll have uh, more to do with our little player guy. Yeah.